Hey everyone, and welcome to Backseat Sports. I'm Josh. That's Caleb. And guys, it's been a long, it's been a long time coming since our last video. Obviously, we, we had everything ready to make a video, and we were, you know, we were right there, right about to make it happen. And in comes old Rona to ruin everything. So we're finally back talking Husker football. Caleb, what's up? Oh, you know, just stay in quarantine, Josh. No spring game. That kind of <laughs> sucks. We had planned a lot of content at this time, like Josh had said, but yep. what can you do? So <laughs> we're, we're back at it now, though. A little burst of sunshine for you guys because we know we needed it. Josh and I needed some normalcy talking about <laughs> sports. There's been nothing on. I uh, know. We're big, we're big golf fans. The Masters was supposed to just happen this weekend, and that didn't, and so bunch of different stuff obviously hasn't happened i love the nba as well so but we're gonna talk about some sports we're gonna feel normal for a couple hours uh talking about this oh, while we're recording so a couple oh, hours i'm pumped oh wow how long is this video gonna be oh well yeah for you guys it's probably gonna be like 15 minutes but but for us yeah, we'll talking, see. you know but yeah i know it's gonna be a good time so hopefully we can just uh, focus on the Husker football for a little bit, everybody. Um, obviously, so far, spring practice. We got two of the 15 spring practices in before things had to get kind of shut down for a while. Hopefully, we can get back to it as soon as possible and the guys can get back into the weight room very, very soon. It seems like that's definitely a possibility. Hopefully, things get back to normal sooner than later around here, at least for the athletes themselves. The people of the great state of Nebraska can follow suit soon after. <laughs> But uh, they did announce that they're hosting like a virtual spring game or something. Um, that like they're streaming like a simulated red white game with like Nebraska legends or something. I don't know why exactly, but I mean, hey, why not, right? At the end of the day, so what you gonna we'll, do? What you gonna do? We'll see what happens. Caleb and I and did throw around the idea of trying to get like a old school stream up of us playing some like old like NCAA fourteen or something. Josh um, would get toasted. <laughs> this guy yeah this you guy. get wrecked <laughs> <laughs> last time we played a football game together we played on the ps2 and i won like 56 to 20 i had you were playing crappy like madden bro the last time we played <laughs> sga football <laughs> at this point it has to happen obviously a few weeks ago they said like basically students who like were gonna elect to stay on campus for the few weeks up and coming like could if they wanted to they could head home if they wanted to because the whole spring break was in there as well for unl um, but it seems like most of the students are back on campus nowadays. Of course, you know, the biggest news this past few months, we're going to talk about Matt Lubbock, of course, because we haven't even made a video since Lubbock was announced, which is crazy. It's been a hot minute. So we are sorry about that. But um, J.D. Spielman. I'm not. Oh, OK. All right. Wow. <laughs> Guys, I am sorry. OK. She. <laughs> it's on Josh. I mean, just blame him. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is disgusting. But JD Spielman, this is also really, I don't know if it classifies as disgusting, but it's definitely sad. Um, he's yes. currently on leave from the team. Ah, and I don't know. It, it's definitely not great. I mean, Frost in their, you know, those spring game interviews said like he was he wasn't gonna call it a departure yet. Um, he says he said we're keeping tabs and wishing him the best while he's dealing with things he has to deal with. "Quote unquote." Hopefully, we'll get him back at some point. Oh, 100%. how are you feeling about that? <laughs> I don't know. He's got to do what's best for him as a yeah. person, and if that's it's a not weird playing football situation, or man, whatever, whatever's going on, just hope it, hope he's doing well. Obviously, with Josh and I, we did tweet that. So if you aren't following us on Twitter, uh, Ooh, we did good plug. We did uh we did do that and talked about it. Just prayers with him. Hope hope all's well, and whatever happens, you know, if it's man, not just, it would suck. Hope, hopefully, as a person, he's good. But yes, it would be very, very, very sad. Yeah. Uh, if if he didn't get his. I mean, we'll definitely. He was gonna break. He was gonna break. You know, he's gonna keep those records, records going. So. Yeah. yeah, we'll definitely talk in length, like in the next few. We have two videos coming. We have at least two videos back to back, if not more than that, like in the coming weeks. So uh, be on the lookout. The this video obviously is the off season preview. Next video is going to be the full way too early big 10 or nebraska predictions uh yeah so we'll, we'll talk in length about that hopefully you know he comes back before the season hopefully gets going again let's, with, with that said though let's transition into matt lubbock all right word matt lubbock the new offensive coordinator for nebraska football 
Obviously, the former offensive coordinator for Oregon football and a former assistant coach under Scott Frost as when he was there as offensive coordinator. He was also Washington's you know, co-offensive coordinator and wide receivers coach for a year before taking a, you know, a basically like a personal year and a half or so off before yep. Frost decided, you know, hey, come back to Nebraska. Let's, let's, let's get the band back together. And we're making it happen once again. So, you know, I mean, Kid, what are your thoughts like on it at this point? Like Matt Lubbock, you know, what does he bring to the table? And like, what are you thinking about that? Honestly, shocked personally that uh, we fired Troy Walters. Uh, yeah. Because Scott Frost is the play caller for our offensive system. I was really shocked at the fact that that that, that was the fire. Uh, I wasn't expecting that whatsoever. Um, but they said that there was some miscommunication between Troy and Scott. And obviously we didn't have, we had another bad year. So in whatever meetings, I'm sure that Bill Moose said, Hey, something has to change is what I would expect to say. And Frost, Probably. I guess, put it on Troy Walters more so than any of the other coaches. I don't know. It, it I that's do what think, it, that's what it feels like. I mean, do you think there was actually real problems and it makes sense for, for him to be fired or, is, or is it a pressure relieving scapegoat situation? I'd say it's a little bit of both just because I think it is some scapegoat. Obviously our offense looked really good the second half yeah. of last season. Uh, but also Adrian Martinez also really looked good the second half of Scott Frost's first season. And then it didn't look good whatsoever. <laughs> and he looked great in the second, in the second season. Obviously right? there was the bubble screen <laughs> dilemma uh, and our offense has been stalling. But again, I feel like Scott Frost is the play caller and the scripts look good at the beginning of the game, which I'm guessing is more of Troy Walters' part. Wow, is it's those definitely I, they're, but I don't they're know. Collab they're collaborating. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely collaborating, and th those looked good. So, yeah, Scott Frost did say that you know Matt Lubbock brought in more structure that the players right. knew what he the, emphasized what the this. practices were going to look like as they're coming <laughs> in, which. Why wasn't that a thing beforehand? Like there was, uh, so, it felt, it felt know. wishy washy. Me, although I think Lubbock's a great hire. I'm excited. Obviously, yeah, he worked with Peterson at Washington, who is a great coach that just retired, and you know, success at Oregon. I think it's a good hire. I'm just perplexed on since that's because Scott Frost is the play caller. The fact that we would fire Troy Walters is just is a little confusing to me. I do want to stick on the the structure and organization aspect of it for a second because like he definitely emphasized that in the interviews yes. for spring in practice the and stuff. Yeah, he stated like, yeah, Lubbock's bringing a new level of like organization, you know, high on on the offensive side, like new scheming because he's fluent in our offense. We've done a better job of self scouting already with him here, and maybe that was truly an issue. Like maybe Troy wasn't bringing enough structure and game. Like, like true planning and structure to the game plan itself. And uh, Frost wanted a little bit more of that in the offense, and Lubbock would be the guy for it. I feel like you're in a really tough spot, though, when you're not calling the plays, and Scott Frost is on the field. I think that's a really tough position to be put in as an offensive coordinator, and yeah. maybe Lubbock's better at it. And, again, I don't think it's a bad hire whatsoever. I'm excited that Lubbock's the coach. Yeah. Troy Walters, obviously, there had to have been issues, but – I feel as though that maybe it was probably just as much Troy's side as it was Scott Frost. Cause at the same time, like he's the guy that should be setting the pace for organization and everything else. Like, you know, he, his demands should be clear and maybe Troy wasn't meeting those demands and maybe they were clear, but yeah. to me, it feels a little bit scapegoaty, but again, I'm excited for Lubbock and you know, right. Maybe Scott Frost trusts and values Lubbock's opinion more than he did Troy Walters. And I mean, that could have been part of it too. Like, yeah, he, he was, you know, an offensive an analyst, worked a lot with the passing game at Oregon with Scott Frost. That potentially could be where he felt like he needed more help was in that side of the ball and like with that specific area of the offense. Lubbock has had a lot of success with wide receiver development in his career. I mean, he, at Duke, he was awarded the football scoop wide receivers coach of the year nice. in 2012. And uh, so like, he, he supposedly has had some success in that area, of course, as well. So it'll be interesting to see how he affects the offense in that way and how the players react to him. As coach, I mean, obviously the recruiting class, what we talked about in our last video, you know, was really successful. And like, we have a lot of talented guys coming in at the wide receiver position. 
this year, young guys and transfers in Omar Manning. That'll be an interesting aspect that Lubbock, I think, should get a lot of chance to work with um, as yeah. well with the offense. For Nebraska football with Scott Frost, everybody has been most excited about our offense, and that's how most people see us winning is with an explosive offense under Scott Frost. And so it's just interesting that Troy Walters, him, had success, and then now to have to fire him and bring in a new guy is is weird it, it is a little weird but again i like lubbock i think he's a good guy i think he'd be a good coach all the best to troy walters and wherever he goes i'm really excited to see what happens now uh this year we interesting to see how like lubbock and uh keith williams work together with yeah. the the wide receiver position because like there's definitely now gonna be another cook in the kitchen when it comes to the wide yeah, receivers it, no there is yeah and keith williams has been so good with the wide receivers so far this year like especially in the recruiting aspect so you have to assume he has a pretty good relationship with those guys so be, that'll be an interesting dynamic to keep an eye on moving forward with how these guys develop obviously to move forward like with the offense the biggest question of course this offseason is the quarterback position the big and question <laughs> the elephant in the room the elephant in the room it, it really is it really is with the offense is martinez the starter where are we at with <laughs> the man himself Luke McCaffrey, um, you know, Luke. what is right? Like, what's the role of Noah Vedral this year? Does Smothers have any chance? Does Logan Smothers have any chance of sniffing playing time this year? So there's a really, really interesting quarterback room heading into the offseason. That's what we were going to focus so much on these lead, these weeks leading up to the spring game to showcase this offense and these quarterbacks. And now we don't get to see it, man. I know, like just at the beginning of spring practice, you were reading the articles, hearing the stuff that, you know, it was an open quarterback room. Scott Frost emphasized that, you know, all three of those guys, you know, Martinez, Vedral, and Luke McCaffrey were all getting first team reps, and it was going to be completely even playing field. Everybody had a chance to, to earn the starting role this year, and I was so excited to hear how it was going to develop in, in practices, but... We just don't know now. So what does that mean? You know, does that mean yeah. that Adrian Martinez now has the leg up because those other guys haven't gotten those reps because of coronavirus is, you know, is what's going to happen. It's I'm so excited to see. Uh, and then, oh, who's who does Lubbock like now? Because now he's the offensive yeah. coordinator. That's he's got a totally unbiased, different view. And he, he gets to read and assess the room just as well. Produce all three of those guys. They got so much to figure out. Everybody knows who I'm pulling for already. But right. I also smothers, man. I, I want to hear more about him again. This is a first four. Yeah, you know, this is a four star guy who who came into a tough quarterback room. Obviously, I think the smart play is the red shirt. This him, really but. hurts smothers. You have to assume that the, the, the loss of spring practice hurts smothers. I don't know about the most, yeah, but like lot. quite a bit. I mean, Verdusco said like in those interviews early on, like he was excited to work with like Logan moving forward. And he said like there was a hand like a handful of things that he was excited to take care of with Logan in the spring practices. And yeah. now he loses some of that opportunity to do so. You know, I mean, like you have to keep four scholarship quarterbacks content when there's That's still tough. a quarterback conversation to be had. And like, <laughs> I don't know, man, like it, it is an incredibly difficult situation. And like for all of you Luke fans out there, the, the, the coronavirus hurts his odds a lot. I mean, yeah, it's scary because now Federal's been job. in the system the longest, and you know, what if he ends up as second string, you know, second string, yeah. and then Luke goes third string, like to end the season, like you again, know? you know, like it, it's so hard to say. It, like going into spring practice, I think I think all of us were pretty, at least me, I was very very confident that Vedral, I mean that uh, McCaffrey would end up with a starting job, and I still am confident that I think Frost will make the decision to do so. In my opinion, I said this last year during the videos that I think. I think Frost has been keeping the conversation pretty open and like favoring, fa at least favoring Martinez because he doesn't want Martinez to put his name in early for a transfer. He yeah. wants to hope to keep Martinez because he knows like there's still issues. Like what if, you know, McCaffrey were to go down or what if things happen? Yeah, we with had, McCaffrey, we like, had all, we've had multiple quarterbacks hurt since Scott Frost. Yeah. Vedral's going to be a senior. So he'll be gone after this year. Like, you know, it would be really, really nice to keep, to keep Martinez around for that's the season safe, and hopefully yeah. for the future. So like I, in my opinion, that's what he's been doing is he's been using that coach talk, the coach speak to keep him around for this off season and allow for more competition early on in this year. But with now with the loss of the practices and seeing how that 
you know, whether or not that'll ever come back over the summer. It's hard to say, and like we don't know what the NCAA will do about that. Like whether they're going to allow the remaining practices to be played early. Like can guys come in early in the fall, or like will they allow it over the summer if this thing blows over? You know, that's the real question. We don't really know. When the bullets against your head, who do you think's going to be the starter come, you know, week one? I mean, my heart says that it's going to be McCaffrey, but I'm I'm actually I'm still deeply concerned. I'm concerned that it's gonna be Adrian. Yeah. Uh, I know I know for you you've lost all hope in Adrian. I know for me I haven't yet. And like we're gonna talk about this. We'll probably give different potential options in our way too early preview next week um about like what would be the outcome with different quarterbacks in there at the start of the season but yeah i i think it's gonna be luke i think he'll make the right choice it, it's so hard how do you turn down that upside that luke can potentially provide with i mean his brother's now the highest paid running back in the nfl i know <laughs> And like, come on, he's such a burst of excitement. And now besides the Illinois game, Adrian has not closed out many games. No. Close ones, Espe well, especially on the road, 50, 50 ones. And he's been bad on the road. <laughs> Frost said it. There's winners and losers. Like, you know, that's just how it is. I'm sorry, but Illinois is just not going to cut it for, for wins and losses. And yeah, we'll see. And what, and one example out of many games I mean, think about the Iowa game where he runs out of thing. bounds. We start like, off at the, the end year. Of season. We don't have any warmups this year. It's a must-win game week one. Like, that's exciting for Nebraska football. I mean, for fans, that's exciting at least. Yeah, it's tough for them. Yeah, so we, we don't have any warmups. We're, we're right into Big Ten play. And You've got to have the best guy 100% guaranteed out there week one, which is a tough decision to make. There's so much down. We know what the downside is of Adrian Martinez. Four games. Four games. And you can say, Caleb, well, he didn't play all those games. Him getting hurt and throwing our other quarterbacks out of rhythm because he can't stay healthy is also a loss on him because he can't stay yeah. healthy. And, that, I mean, and, and he that's part of football. Part of football is attrition. He's been and, and Adrian has not, never been healthy. We'll definitely talk more about this in our video next week when it comes to the quarterbacks because there's going to be a lot to talk about for sure. I mean, when it comes to wide receivers, again, we're still – we're probably going to be in limbo with J.D. Spielman, but – we're going to have to go with options with, with him and without him. Obviously, the big addition, Omar Manning, the field stretcher, six foot four, athletic, JUCO we transfer, sought after by m most teams in the country. We snagged him, luckily. And, uh, I mean, he is – that you, we cannot overstate the importance that Omar Manning needs to bring – like will bring, and hopefully, to this offense. Just look at Martinez last year. He missed Stanley Morgan so much. And add two more inches of height. Yeah, so hopefully Omar Manning can be the man. I'm pumped about it. And yeah. I, I love our, our whole wide receiver class. Uh, I think it's really exciting yeah. for this year. And I think there's so much upside. And we're going to probably see uh, two or three of those freshmen on the yeah. field. In, and if JD's gone, you will definitely see. Oh, for mostly. sure. If JD's gonna gone, most of the class. we're going to see two or three of them probably. I mean, like Frost already mentioned like in those in the spring interviews that like Jordan Riley and Alante Brown were both guys that looked good already early on in those first two practices. He said that they could easily make an immediate impact on the team. So, especially with the four with the four game freshman rule now with redshirting, like you'd yeah, have we'll to imagine, bets, you know, a handful of these guys are going to get reps out there. And obviously, we've seen like if he thinks the guy's going to be able to make an impact early on, AK Wandale, like they're or going Adrian. to the field. Yeah, he, or he, he'll play him. He'll definitely play. Yeah, him. we'll have to expect that from the receiving core, especially if JD is gone. So that'll be really interesting. I mean, offensive line wise, we're returning everyone. Hey, yay! <laughs> Woo! You'll have to see it. I mean, again, we can only we can only see improvement. Cam Jurgens, I think throughout the year we obviously saw progression from him, and the unit as a whole slowly progressed. So we saw that with the success of the running back groups in the end of the year. There was obvious success that we had near the end of the year that we weren't having at the beginning because of the offensive line's improvements. And uh, hopefully that can continue. We are returning Christian Gaylord from injury. He got a, you know, he got an exception to sixth stay here. Year. A six-year senior. And uh, hopefully that means that we can move Matt Farniok inside. That would be ideal. Need it. We absolutely need it. High Mace is back, who actually showed that he's pretty good. And then, you know, our center will have now played for two years. He'll be a center. 
Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> NFL. that's nice. So instead yeah. of never playing once offensive line before, so we did finally again, like Josh said, there was a lot of upside. There's a ton of upside to be had for yes. our offensive line. Yes. There's a lot of good recruits uh, that are coming in, and we saw glimpses at the end of the year. We saw guys actually pulling blocks and knowing where to go sometimes. There was pockets sometimes. And uh, sometimes we got a push, so which was not happening at the beginning of the year. It was painful. So no, I think the more cohesive, again, and the upside of that is since they have so many years to play, the more cohesive they get, the better they get throughout the year. So um, it's definitely the long game for that. But I think this year we'll yeah. definitely see a step up. And I think they'll at least be mediocre, which – would be amazing at this point. I'd take middle oh, of the yeah. pack. For sure. I mean, you know, we're, we're going to have a running back, Dedrick Mills, obviously. You got Ramir Johnson Who looked coming great back because we year. had some offensive line presence at the end of the year. Yeah. If we go from 100th ranked offensive line to 40th, which seems like even a pretty reasonable. Even 60th. Even, even 60th. 60th. I'd be so You're, happy if we were at the midway of, yeah. of in the country. Right, and like that would be, we would see major improvement on the offense as a whole just because of that. So if this I core mean, can figure things out, we'll be in at least decent shape offensively. I mean, for no like what. eight weeks, we said Dedrick Mills still hasn't had a legit shot at, at showing what he could yeah. do because Literally. it was so bad. And then finally, and then he finally like last did, four and man, he just tore up, tore it up. It was awesome yeah, to watch. Exactly. So that's the upside for the offense. There is like, if they could be fortieth, what if they're even better than that? What if we see the step forwards from these guys with Gaylord back, you know, the freshmen coming in now as sophomores. There's a world where Farniak, you know, is a good guard. And like, we have a lot, we actually have some depth at the offensive line now. And then suddenly this core goes from 100th to like 40th, 30th. And our offense, especially our running game is good again. So that's that's the upside that people are seeing with the offense and with Nebraska as a whole. <laughs> that, that's just the question whether or not that can happen. Obviously, we got like running like Sevion Morrison, freshman. He's coming in, and uh, we should be we're bringing back a lot of the guys last year who didn't see the field at all. So I'll be really really interested to see what this running back group can do with an improved offensive line in front of them. We could talk all day about this, and we will in the next video. We'll be talking about how this offense and the defense, of course, can perform moving forward and the way to release predictions so i hope you guys are ready for that okay we got anything else to add before we wrap this thing up offense looks like it's going to be a lot better josh and i are so excited to, to cover the quarterback battle <laughs> as it keeps going <laughs> plead uh, him right now beg get on your knees <laughs> yeah <laughs> let us know please oh, if only we knew exactly what he was thinking it would be it'd be a lot easier but yeah, i think all he's those... got he, he's got to play it the the cards close to the chest obviously because yes. He wants all the quarterbacks, and it's tough. It's it's tough managing the quarterback room. Uh, I'm excited about it. Yeah, if you guys have any comments, we'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Who's going to start? I want to see a nice civil debate at the bottom of the comments section <laughs> on what's going to happen. You I'm so too. Exci I'm so excited to hear that. Leave a like, as always. Follow us on Twitter. We do tweet things, especially as the season gets closer. Uh, it oh, gets yeah. a lot more fun. And if you tweet us, we'll reply. Oh, 100%. So, yeah, with that said, guys, like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. We do appreciate all the support. And as always, I'm Josh. That's Caleb. This has been Backseat Sports, and we will see you next time. Go, oh, yeah. Go,